Welcome back to the Game Blocks tutorials. This tutorial covers how to create multiple levels in a game or multiple locations in a uh, point and click adventure game. So um, that's a typical way to uh, build out a space in a game is to have different physical locations. Um, in the old days, uh, a single screen like this would be a location and you'd stitch them together into a world. And a fair number of games still work that way, point and click adventures being the main example. So this will show um, how to stitch those things together. So basically we need to start out by creating the concept of a location. And the basis for that really is the stage here where you have a background. You've got a series of backgrounds, one for each location. We're going to do some, some, some hills and uh, inside a cave. Uh, I know my art's not great, but so the idea is at the start of the game, just like you position a character where they start in level one, you want to make sure that you're showing the background for level one. So we'll go to the control section, grab out a block for when the uh, game starts, and make sure we set the background. Notice the blocks are a little bit different uh, for the stage. Uh, we have something to switch the background explicitly, and we'll set it to background one. That's what we're looking at right now. So that's where we start. Um, so to go to a new location, we're just going to cut to the chase and not really code the character. We're going to build a cave. Surprise. So we build a cave, a uh, clickable cave in this view so we can transition to the next view. So we do that by creating a new sprite. And we'll do it very simply. Make sure we're doing black. Drawing something. There we are. This might be a big cave. Let's see. Let's fill it in. Okay. So there we go. And we can put it wherever we want to. And what we want to do is when it's clicked on, we'll change levels. So it's pretty easy to grab that event. We go to control, grab when I am clicked on. And when I'm clicked on, the main thing we'll do, and you know, this is in the old days before uh, the game blocks library was very mature what you'd have to do is just broadcast an event into the whole game you'd say broadcast level 2 whatever it might be location 2 whatever it is and what that does it tells everything in the world it's time for level 2 and anybody that cares about that um, typically that would be sprites in level 1 would care because they know they have to disappear or the stage might care because it knows it needs to change the background it would listen for that event. And so we'll go through that old process. We should only have to do it for the stage. Um, but you can catch that event anywhere if you want to be doing other logic when the level transitions. So the stage cares that we're going to level 2. It will wait for that event and change the background. So waiting for the blocks to come up. So basically when it catches the use this hat block here to catch the event. When I receive level 2, it's already set right. We're going to change the background, so right click, duplicate, keep this easy. We'll change to background 2. Naturally, we'd want to have another command for changing back to level 1 if you come back out, but we won't worry about that right now. So there's the first part of changing levels. Um, now the other part, and this is where the blocks come to be useful, um, you want to tell sprites to um, either show themselves or hide themselves based on where we are. So we'll we can use some specialized blocks. Actually, you know what? I'm going to show you first. Um, the generic way with the game blocks library would be to use these blocks here, which say launch on sprites. For instance, you can tell multiple sprites to hide, or run on sprites could work. You'd want to use launch on sprites to make them all disappear at one time. Uh, but there's a, a cleaner command. There's just a few specialized commands that um, are in the library for doing tasks that happen a lot. So you can use this hide sprites and it takes the same argument um, I'll walk through it for those who haven't watched the other tutorial um, you gotta grab a list bubble from here this will let you create a list you need to pass in a list of the names of the sprites that need to disappear we will start by uh, we have nothing to make disappear uh, let's go ahead and make some junk in the world let's say we had a tree out here in front Oh, that's a terrible tree. Okay. There we go. Let's slow them up the tree. Okay, so we had a tree. Uh, 
and let's go ahead and name it tree so our code makes some sense. And you know, typically this would probably be unhidden at the start of a location, um, but we'll just have it there for now. We'll just show to show how we can make something disappear. It's up on top of the hill. Um, so, sorry, I got a sprite too. So when level one ends, we want to make sure that tree disappears. So it'll be one of the items we add to that list. So there we go. So we just type in the name of the sprite. If we wanted to make more than one thing disappear, we would add more that way, or you can take them away by pressing the other arrow. So there we go. So this could be you know many things disappearing. So okay, we've clicked on the cave. We tell the stage to change the background. We tell the tree to disappear. Um, then of course we might want to have this character change location. Um, let's um, let's not do that just yet. So this will get get us most of the way there, right? So this will show the concept. So play the game. Game should be running. We click on the cave, and voila, we're in the cave. The tree has disappeared. We could also have a show sprites command here that shows various things in the cave. Um, but wait, there's something wrong. There's, a, there's another cave here. You know what? We did have something to make disappear in addition to that tree. So, oops. We want to. Sorry, we want to make sprite two disappear as well. I don't know where I am. All right, so we do want to have another thing here. It should probably be called cave, but it's called sprite two. That's how we'll refer to it. Okay, so now we have to get the game back into a starting position. Let's see, does it start correctly? We have to unhide the tree, wouldn't we? Okay, so it's a good review, don't you think? Let's go ahead and set up the tree to unhide itself at the start of the game. So when the game starts, show myself. And let's see how close that gets us. It's pretty close. Yeah, so then we're back to the starting position. So we want to make sure that this cave is out. I think it's, I guess it's working. It should be working. Let's go ahead and run it. Game is playing. We click on the cave. Cave is gone and the tree is gone and we're in the cave. Okay, so you get the idea. So you can tell multiple things to disappear, tell multiple things to appear, and some other commands too. You might want to have him go to a certain position. So um, I'll show you that one thing, which is different than this at least. Showing things is the same as this, but with the show sprites command. So to have him go somewhere, we would then do what we did in the cutscene tutorial. And you can, well, you could use this tell sprite in this case, but I'm going to stay consistent and just use this launch, uh, use this launch command just to make it explicit what we're doing. We're going to launch this command. We're not really going to wait for it to end, but we, we, we know we want the other sprite to um, do something. So again, to reference a sprite, when you see this symbol, you need to use this object bubble and pull down the name of the sprite. We're going to tell sprite one, which is the player, to go to another location. So it would maybe say we put him in the middle of the room, maybe put him down close to the bottom, like he's just entering the cave. Per se, perhaps, and um, need to unhide the cave at the start of the game now. Now that we're actually make, make, making a whole game here, so I'm in the cave, dragging this out, and I need a a show block. All right, so now we'll see the cave too, and we start the game. Here we go. Click on the cave. We're inside, and then he's repositioned. So it begins to feel like you're moving between two locations. Uh, just for review, um, to change levels, catch a click event on something, or whatever your event might be. It might be this character bumping into something. Send an event to the universe to let everybody know to change their state based on level two. Probably you only have to catch that in the stage, though you may want to catch it elsewhere. But you're only strictly required to catch it in the, in the stage. Stage changes the background. We don't have that code here, but that, hap that happens off screen. We hide the sprites that need to disappear from level 1, uh, show whatever sprites need to appear for level 2, and then you can talk to a specific sprite like the player and move him where he needs to be. So that concludes the levels tutorial.